Welcome to this third installment in a series of videos on how to construct simple logic gate programs. In the previous video we discussed a little bit of the theory and went through the thought process associated with designing a program that could realize or at least simulate the behavior associated with the AND gate. In this video, we'll get into actually making the program. By the end of this video, we'll have the whole program functional so you can run it as many times as you want. It'll work every time. We have moved from theory to design to now we are implementing our design in an actual an Arduino program to simulate the behavior of this sort of gate. One can recall from the previous video that we did a sketch, a true sketch, you know Arduino programs are often referred to as sketches, but we did an actual program sketch, the layout of what will happen first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. in our program, just the overall play by play. To get started in the front of this program one could say that our program is going to begin below this line I'm drawing right now. How is it going to begin? Well, with most programs, it's just good practice. Go ahead and enter this sort of information in the multi-line commenting stage. Give your program a title, put your name or whatever avatar name you go by, give it a date so you know the last time when it was created. This is for your own benefit as well as for a later user. And then definitely, a lot of people don't do this in Arduino style programs, but it's so helpful when you have a lot of pins in use to go ahead and list out all the digital analog pins that you're using and where they're going to. Go ahead and just put that in there. In our case, we're not using any pins. We're just using the Arduino, some software, and the serial monitor. Then give, your, give a description. What does this program do? This is just going to be a simple software and serial monitor implementation of AND gate behavior. Then you can go through like what it does part actually reword and place that design or that program sketch that you've come up with inside the description but most of the time you'd want to clean it up um, but something like that in the description and then I've always found it helpful to add in if it's a piece of code that I'm going to be returning back to and potentially improving in the future to give yourself a slot to list any future improvements like how could I make this better after we get it functioning and have the core program and what do you know how can I wrap various glowy and showy things all around it to make it more interesting that's just a, a sort of suggestion of how you can the next step is I always section off each thing that I'm going to do in the program I'm going to have a section underneath this global variables will go in this section and then I'll include whatever function prototypes we're going to create two special purpose functions in this program I like to always prototype functions so that the compiler gets a peek at what to expect before it gets all the way down through the program then has to go to the bottom to get the functions and then implement them and, you know in some cases this is necessary some cases it's not but it's not a bad practice to include your prototypes up front somewhere normally right underneath your global variables then I'll section off the void setup so that when I'm scrolling back through this program making alterations I can always quickly identify okay yeah the void setups underneath this block and it'll be here and then a the similar practice with void loop because it gets confusing once you have all the code laid out where each individual piece is taking place this is just speeds up editing later down the road to include sections like this and all I'm doing is using a multi-line comment the structure with our character to just block off various bits of the code and then at the very bottom under void loop is where we'll include the special purpose function code will go down here and what we'll end up having in the end is we'll have a get input function and we'll also have a special purpose we'll have a simple and gay function this function will capture the behavior associated with AND gates, the core functionality of them. Those will be our two functions. The first one will go in here and the second one will go under here. Being said, let's go back to our sketch. The very first thing we'll want to do is welcome the user to the program and display any special instructions. 
this will take place it's going to run one time at the very start of the program so where would that take place well there's no better place for it than void setup that's exactly what void setup does and since we're using the serial monitor in this program the first thing we'll need to do is establish a serial connection serial begin and then that connection takes a little while sometimes to get established between the arduino and one's computer so it's not bad practice to include a brief delay it just gets us started now we need to start printing that welcome message to the screen so in order to do that we'll we'll just we'll have welcome message and special instructions for the user of this program that's what will go underneath this line so we need to welcome them to the program but before we do that we may want it to space down in the serial monitor give it a space so it's not all the way at the top of the monitor to do that we can just enter two double quotation marks that'll give us an extra line at the top blank and then drop down so then we can actually start displaying our welcome message like welcome something really simple just to let the user know hey you know you just entered the AND gate program and it, we could also give a space an extra space between this and the next message by just doing an escape character with the N which is just new line so what this will do is it'll display an empty space in the serial monitor then it'll display this message it'll drop down to the next line and then one more under that so it just spaces things out nicely that little escape in the new line character is a pretty useful technique then we'll need the special instructions so we can go serial print line and then in the context of this program and all these logic gate programs that we'll be going through they they run better if the, if the serial monitor is set to no line ending I mean you could do it with new line whatever but in the context of these programs we're going to instruct the user to select the no line ending setting and then we will can drop a new line after that so that these two will be spaced equally out and we can quarantine that off from the rest of the program just to emphasize to the user that hey this is just a startup message by just drawing the hyphens out and you could add a new line after that or not and then we'll need a brief delay just to give it a sort of flow that makes sense for the user you could give a shorter or longer delay it just really depends on what you want At this point alone we can run this and make sure it works so we can upload the code make sure there's no compiler errors make sure that it displays to the serial monitor the way we expected it to so we click on serial monitor yeah welcome to the AND gate program select no line ending setting and well in this case I have it on new line so I, that would let me know I need to go ahead and shift it to no line ending and that gets us started that gets us into the program we've got our welcome message we've got our special instructions we've got the hyphen bar to let the user know that's the end of the welcome and the special instructions so that's pretty much all we would need in the setup this takes care of Part one. Part one. Check. The next step is we could go immediately to step two, which would be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we know that we're going to have this play again structure. And most of the time, when you're designing a game, especially in the Arduino context, given the way void loop works, it makes sense to take care of the play again up front before you do any of the other like steps two three and four it makes sense to get play again out of the way how do you do that well last time we discussed one technique is to come up with some sort of if structure inside void loop so you could go if do a test at the top of void loop and you could use program stop or you could use just simple start whatever you want to um control when void loop repeats and when it doesn't 
In this case, we'll use something like program ah equals false. Then we'd run void loop. And I've just set the if structure. I started with a curly bracket and closed it off. And this will just be a Boolean type variable that if we don't want the program to stop, we want it to run again, then the value of it should be false. If we do want it to stop, then we should toggle it down here somewhere in this part. We'll toggle it to true so that we still make it run through void loop. When it goes true, it won't run through again. So in order to do that, we'll need a Boolean type global variable. We could do it in various ways, but a global variable is just easy to deal with. And in the context of a simple program, so we have program stop equals false. So this is going to be a global variable named program stop of the Boolean type. So we go up here to our section with global variables and we add in a Boolean. Boolean stop program. And let's initially set that to false because we want it to run through the loop at least once at startup. So Boolean stop program variable is a Boolean type variable named stop program and we have assigned it a value of false. At this point, void loop would run endlessly. So just to see how that control structure is going to help us, say that we could underneath we could have program stop just to verify that it works. You always it's always good to test. Set it to true, toggle it down at the bottom. And so inside this, just a test, we could go something like serial print line. This should print once. As long as this prints once, we know that not only did the program run through, it pa it'll pass this if test, it prints once, then we, then if it, as long as it doesn't loop again, we know that this was effective in stopping void loop from repeating. So we can upload the code and program stop was not declared in this. I swapped the names. It should be program stop instead of stop program. So program stop. So the compiler will yell at us. It will let us know. That's why we always want to check and recheck as we're going through. This variable name should now match this variable name so we can try to upload it again and if this is functioning the way that we want it to that should finish the welcome message the special instruction and this sentence should print once that's all that should be displayed on the serial monitor well let's open the monitor and see what happens yeah welcome to the AND gate program select no line ending setting this sentence should print once and it did so we know that this stop control structure or it, what it'll eventually be is a play again control structure we know that it works it's effective we can take this out we've tested it we don't need this anymore and we can and we just know that we're eventually going to have to toggle this particular sort of variable like we will initially eventually need to remove this particular line of code from our program but it gives us the ability to run it one time and just and use it's basically forcing void loop to act a whole lot like void setup what was what is the very next thing we would need to do in our program well given this is an AND gate program we need to collect those user inputs we need some means of collecting them what do we want the user to do we want them to enter the first input which would be just in our case is going to be the character t or a character f how would we do that well we'll need to tell the user to do that first we need to solicit um user for the first input then underneath that we're going to need to solicit user for the second input into our AND gate program and underneath that then we're going to have to test user inputs we're going to need to test them via an AND gate function that we'll have to create 
But this is just a general layout of what's immediately going to happen after the program enters. That stop program, when it's not false, what is the very first thing we're going to want our piece of software to do? Well, to collect those two inputs for each input of the gate. We'll need to ask the user to print line enter first truth value. And then we need to tell the user, well, how do they enter that first truth value? Well, enter T for true and for false. And then close parentheses. We can enter an escape and a tab. And then input one is going to equal, well, whatever they happen to enter. And this just keeps it all on one line. This tab will tab over just like on your keyboard. And so we can close this down. But we need to be really careful about how we do this with these parentheses so that everything works out. Yeah, see, I'm hovering here. It's telling me that that bracket's closed down. And then I can use the semicolon. So enter the first truth value. Enter T for true, N for false. It'll tab over, and then eventually we're going to get it to display a true or a false based on what the what character the user entered. That would be a good solicitation to collect that first input. We can take and copy this and just change it slightly and use the exact same thing to solicit the user for the second input. The second truth value, enter T for true, N for in or F, and it's not an N, we should have F, sorry, and F for false. Telling the user that it'll prompt the user to enter a T for the first truth value or an F, enter a T for the second truth value or an F. Now we don't yet have a means of collecting these their entries and using them, but we can go ahead and test the program to see if it's going to work the way we think it's supposed to. That that's always important to test this stuff as we go along. So upload the code. I uh, didn't receive any compiler errors, and then we can display it on the serial monitor. Yeah, enter the first truth value. Enter T for true, F for false. Input one, which would display wherever the user, whatever the user enters, and then it's going to prompt them to enter the second value. That's what we want. That's good. So it's functioning the way we think it should at this point. Now we need some means of collecting that user input. I'm just we'll just tighten this up. We need at this point like some special purpose like get input function to collect whatever the user enters. And then after this we'll need the exact same thing right underneath that. So what would that look like? Well we need to design that get input function so we can scroll down to our get input function and this is where one just has to know how does the Arduino take in serial inputs and do something with them. Before we get started we need to figure out well what kind of value do we want this function to return? What kind of value are we going to have it stored in? Well, there's got to be some variables associated with it. So before we can even do the get input function, we need to figure out some sort of global variable. So enter the first input, enter the first truth value, then enter the second truth value. So what kind of variable is going to be capturing these things? Well, if it's a T and an F, which is character, we'll need two character type global variables. And we can add them in our global variable section here. We've done our program stop global variable, two variables of the character type, one for input, input one, and we can just initialize it but not assign it any value, and one for input two. And these can be used to store whatever the user enters, whether they enter a T or an F. And that'll work out fine. It should. And this is the, the variables we use to collect the return value of our get input function. So once we have these global variables in place, we can go back to our get input function 
and we want it to return a, a variable of the character type. So you can name it, get input, and it's going to return stuff, but is it going to take anything in? Does it need any parameters? No, they won't be necessary for our point, so we can just void in terms of the parameters. You could leave it blank, but void's a little more explicit. How do we want it to do? We want it to collect serial inputs. So the way one can do that, one way to do it is to go while the serial connection is available. While there's nothing in the Arduino's serial receive buffer, do nothing. We can tell you, you know, I'm just doing this so that it's explicit. Do nothing with the multi-line comment structure. So basically this line will tell the Arduino to just wait around until something enters its serial receive buffer. What do we want to do after that? Well, you can go ahead and enter like you know another while structure you could go while serial uh, available is greater than zero namely there when something does enter its serial receive buffer and then have it do something that's perfectly fine you can have it read that character but at this point we would need something to collect this. Remember we want those global variables those are what we're going to use we're going to return into those variables so we need some sort of just stand-in kind of just blank character to capture what we're going to pull in from the serial monitor. So you go with character and just do real simple just create a global variable named ch just for character and we could have down here in the get input we could say okay you want to whenever there's something in the buffer read it and assign it to that character that global character variable so serial read read the bytes that are in the buffer and assign that read the byte that enters the buffer assign it to the character variable and then we could break out of this all of this is not really necessary, but it's making it totally explicit. Like after you get a character, you've stored it in the, the global ch variable, break out, and then return that character back to the outside of the function. So we can collect it. This structure, it'll work. There's no problem. You could do it a lot simpler. You wouldn't necessarily need this line. And then you don't necessarily need the break. But it does work, so we'll go with it right at this moment. We can clean this up later if we want to. I'm returning a character type out of the get input function. So let's see, where do we want that collected? After we've solicited the user for the first truth value, they've entered a T or an F, we could use the get input here. We could say input one equals whatever is being returned out of the get input function that should be input one then we could do the same maneuver down here with this we could say input two we want it to be assigned whatever values coming out of the get input function on its second call it's being called once here and the value is assigned the user to say the user enters a T get input will collect that read it assign it to that global CH character type variable then it'll return it out and we'll catch it in the get input variable and we could do just call it again down here and then assign whatever they the user enters on that second pass to input two this isn't the best way to do it but it's one of the easiest ways to do it now we would but we want to display something that the user what to let the user know that yeah we captured their value and we captured it correctly so we need some control structure to display whatever input one was and then display whatever input two is going to be let me correct this it should be input two right there how would we do that well we can just do a test if input one 
equals well, I need to double equals for an ant, for an if test. If it equals what? Well, if it equals a t, remember they'll be entering a t or an f. Then we could serial print. We could say true. And this would display true after that. But now I've noticed it. This is the way it works with coding. You know, we're learning how to do these programs. So that if we end up and we leave that print line here, this is going to end up on a second line. But we want all of this, this whole piece. And after the user enters a T or an F, we want this to appear right behind that equal sign. So we would want to remove the print line, the line part to the print and add it here instead. Take care of the alternative if they happen to enter an F, we could go else serial print line false and then close that down. This should give us a way to give the user feedback. It solicits them to enter a truth value, they enter a T or an F, and it will display Based on if they entered a T, it'll give them a true after input one, lets them know, yes, it was processed correctly. Or if they entered an F, it'll throw a false at the back of that. You can repeat this structure underneath that second solicitation of the user. So we can just copy and then just repeat. But in this case, we'll need to change our stuff to reflect that we're at input 2 now. So just change input 1 to input 2. And let's verify. We're not getting any compiler errors. We can upload the code. Make sure that it actually works. Does it collect the input properly? Does it display the proper feedback? So welcome to the AND gate program. Select no line ending. Setting good. And enter the first truth value will put a V in there when we go back to the program. So enter the first truth value, enter T for F, or T for true, F for false, and then input one. So let's enter a T and see what happens. Enter. And it displays true. So we know that it's not only reading our character entry correctly, it's also telling us, it's showing that yes, you entered a true. So then we could go false. And notice we didn't correct it, but so it displayed it on the next line, which we're going to fix that when we go back. But it's actually, it's got the overall functionality that we desired it to have. It's just not displaying it exactly the way we'd want it. But that's perfectly fine. So this is working. So the first thing we can do is correct this part. Why is it displaying this false on a second line? Well, because this line is after the serial print. So delete that and then enter the first truth value enter the second truth value now we can run it again verify it that we've corrected at it so it should display the way we want it to this time open the serial monitor welcome to the angate program select no line setting enter the first truth value enter t for true f for false so if i enter a false an f in the serial monitor right there enter and it kicks a false out. It's displaying the correct reading. So you could enter a T just to check it in the serial monitor. Press the enter key and it goes true. Now that's functioning the way we wanted it to. We know that it's collecting the first value, it's collecting the second value, it's displaying them properly, giving the user proper feedback. That's good. Now we have basically all the input aspect to this program established as far as getting those truth values. We need to evaluate those values in terms of test user inputs via an AND gate function. That is our very next step. That means we have to create our AND gate function, our special purpose. This is where the magic in the program lies. So we can scroll down. We've got our input. We know it's working. Like I said, you could remove this line and the break and that parentheses and it would still work. But for our purposes, we'll leave it alone. And then we need to create a special AND gate function. First off, do we want this to return a value, or do we just want it to be void in terms of its type, return type? Well, in the previous video, we talked about maybe having it capture in a special output type, you know, a variable named output. We could still do that, but we don't have to. Instead, what we can do is just have it print 
whether the evaluation came out true or whether the evaluation comes out false. And that would be really simple. It keeps things easier. If you can simplify, it's normally a good idea to do so. So we can just make this a void and then say and gate function. And we will need this function to have certain parameters or argument slots. Namely, we need it to pull in those two inputs. So those two inputs of are the character type, so we could go char input one, input two. We can get it to pull in these two type inputs, then the parameters, and then we can do our test. How would we test this? Well, we can go back to our go back to our initial program sketch. That's why we did the sketch. We need to be able to refer to it from time to time. The core functionality, this is step three, the test or the function that captures the behavior rule associated with AND gates. And that rule is if both of the inputs are true, then set the output to true. Otherwise, set the output to false. That's the test we need is a way to determine if both of those inputs are true. If they are, we will serial print true. If they're not, we need to serial print false. So we can go back to our special purpose AND function down here. And let's see, what will that test look like? This is where all the magic comes in and where we need to be really careful about how we craft this. The user is entering characters, single T's, single F's. We can test that and say that if input 1 has been assigned a T the T character, and we'll need an extra parenthesis in front of input 1, we'll need two parentheses, and input 2 has been, has the um, assignment of true. If the user has entered a character of a T for input 1 and a character of T for input 2, then what do we do? Well, we'll need to the AND the output is true. That would be perfectly fine. Maybe something like this. AND gate output is true. We may want to slow this down some. It's not going to hurt to slow it down a little bit, or else it'll be so quick that the user can get overloaded. So let's give it a two-second delay from in the evaluation to give the to, to simulate the idea that it's having to think about it. <laughs> you know, the idea is to to make it more realistic. If the user has entered two characters of T, then so that would take care of the first round if both the inputs are true, the AND output's true. Otherwise, or else, what do we want it to do? We can give it a line. So the other option is that one of the two inputs won't have a character of T assigned to them. It, and so the only other option is that, that it would be an F. At that point, one of the inputs would be false. and Gate output is false. That's all we'd need to do. We should slow this down too and add in a slight delay. So a yeah, 2,000 millisecond delay, which turns into a two-second delay for the user. It just gives it will just display nicer with that delay in there. You can play with the delays, shorten them, lengthen them, however much you'd want to. We need a way to signify that this round of testing has ended. To do that, we can just serial print some bunch of stars at the bottom. That lets the user know that the gate had, they've entered inputs, they've been evaluated, they know what the gate just outputted, and then they know that that round has completed. And to space this out in case they play again multiple times, we can add in a few extra new lines at the back end. This will give it, it'll drop to the next line, it'll put two empty lines between whatever comes next.
as far as output goes. We can leave these lowercase, we capitalize them if we want to, doesn't matter. You just have to be careful if you put too many bytes worth of stuff in here, you need to store these somewhere else besides RAM, but we're not building that big of a program. We should be in good shape. So let's see. And we have our AND gate function, we've designed it, it should work. This is what makes it an AND gate program rather than an OR, a NOR, an XOR, is that one little line right there. And then the way that the prints are arranged. So now all we need to do is call this function directly under our get input stuff after we've solicited the user. We've solicited the user, we know it's collecting them, it's storing whatever the get input, it's storing it in the first call is going to store input one, the second call is going to store input two. At this point, we'll need to call that AND gate function to test those inputs. And, okay. and given that we're just using serial prints, we don't need to cat collect a return value. This doesn't have a return value the way we've designed it. So, but it can take in input one, it can take in input two, and then do the evaluation. This is the call to gate function. And then that should display it. Yeah, this should work. Let's test it though. We don't know. There may be some typos. So verify. No compiler errors. That's always a good sign. And now upload it to our Arduino and let's see what the serial monitor displays. We could have spacing wrong, we could have timing wrong, we don't know yet. Welcome to the AND gate program, select no line setting, enter the first truth value, enter T for true, F for false. So let's, well, let's try the first option. So say and enter a T into the window, enter. It gives me true, lets me know that yes, you entered a T. So enter another T, and the output of this should be true. So let's go enter, AND gate output's true. It delayed a little bit, then it's AND gate output is true, and it displayed that starred line to let us know that yes, if you enter two T's, you get a T or a true out of the AND gate. So we know that it's functioning correctly at this point, but we don't have a replay set in. So we don't have it so it'll repeat on command yet, but as far as overall functionality goes, this would work. If you just if you didn't want it to have the play again feature, you could just reset your Arduino, like I can push the reset button on the Arduino, and it'll send the same prompt again. All I did was push reset. I can enter false, and it just enter an F and it goes false, enter another F, it's false, then wait a second, the AND gate output is false. We know functionally that two T's will make it go true as an output. Two F's as an output will make it go false. Well, what about the other options? We can push reset again on the Arduino. And it's going to set it up. So welcome to the end gate for enter your first truth values. Let's vary it. We've done the two trues, the two falses. So what if our first input is true? Our second input is false. Right there. Well, the AND gate output should be false, and it is. Another option is to have the first input false, the second one true. So let's try that. We just reset the Arduino one more time. This is just doing it manually. We're going to have it so the software takes care of all these repeats before we're done. But at the moment, just to check the core functionality, we could go to the first input. It's false. And then the second one we can say is true and turn into the serial monitor a T and it comes out true false true the output should be false and it is at this point we know that our special purpose functions are doing exactly what they're designed to do they're collecting the user input they're giving the user feedback of what was entered and they're displaying the proper output after those after those inputs are being evaluated through the AND gate function that's good that's 99% of the battle just to make sure all that works right. And it does. I didn't really like that there was quite so many of these stars, so I'll take a few of them away. You can leave them or take them away. You can use periods, whatever you want. Dollar signs doesn't matter. It's just a way to delineate when 
a round has ended. Now, what do we need? Well, we wanted the software to take care of that play again part rather than us having to manually reset the Arduino every time. At this point where we would be here under the AND gate function after it's after it's completed its work and now we would need some control code to ask the user do they want to play again so we do need to send them a message serial print line do you want to play again and then we need to tell them what kind of characters or what is a valid entry do you want to play again get T or F for the AND gate inputs, why not do Y and N for play again? Enter Y for yes, N for no. Then we can close this down. We could skip lines, whatever we needed to, or we can take that up. And a later time, we can add a new line there. It wouldn't matter. Whatever we want to do. But, We'll probably want to confirm, just like we do up here with these, what the entry actually was. We could cut this off, cut the print line off, and this will keep everything, unless we put a serial print line below this, everything's going to display on a single line. Do you want to play again? Enter Y for yes, N for no. Then we have a gap here. We'll want to display uh, that Y or that N ultimately. It's just cleaner for the user if we do we'll need to be toggling the program stop value that's assigned to program stop C first we'll need to collect that wire in so we can use our fancy get input function and then in this case we can assign its return value just to that stock character type global variable like remember we have it in play we've used it inside the get input functions well why don't we use it in terms of the play again as well. Just repurpose it. Now this is all going to be linear. It's going to go from the top to the bottom so we can assign the value whatever get input turns out. Get input is just going to collect characters. Whatever the user enters, this will collect it. If they enter a yes, it will collect it and assign it to the CH variable. If they enter an N, it will assign it to the CH variable. Then we can test based on what the value, the assignment to CH is. So if CH equals what? Well, if it equals yes or a Y character, then what do we want it to do? Well, we'll want it to, this would be the user does want to play again. The program stop would need to be false. Namely, we would not want the program to stop. We want it to hit the bottom avoid loop and roll back around. So program stop, we should assign it the value of false. And given that it's a global variable, doing it here inside void loop will change it all the way at the upper global level. And then we're going to add some more in, but let's just take care of the other option. Otherwise, program stop should equal true and this would halt the void loop from spinning over and over and over then we could close it down at this point we don't need this stop program stops true down here at the bottom we can take it away we knew we were going to have to remove it well we've reached the point that we need to remove it and just to keep everything explicit in our own mind we can flag that that, that this is in fact the end of void loop right here. End of void loop. That's where void loop terminates or either that curly bracket is where it's going to halt it. If the user happens to enter a no, it's going to drop to this and stop. Or it's going to hit that and then roll back around if they enter a Y. Not too bad. No problem there. But to get the user entry, we're still not there yet. We need that user entry. We need to print whether they entered a Y or a yes. We can do that right under collect input. Serial print print line. 
and then print whatever is assigned to that CH. If we leave it like this and we have print line and we have print here, it's going to display a Y or an N right after on the same line as this center, as that string. That'll be a nice way to give the user feedback so they can see that, yeah, they entered a Y or an N if they forget in between in this brief period of time. We've got this. Now we would probably want it to create some sort of space. Having enough spaces is normally pretty important in terms of using the serial monitor. This will just give an empty space under this sentence. This sentence will be printed to the screen. Then this will force an empty space. And at this point, we would need to confirm that, okay, they entered a Y, so they want to play again. So our print line is going to be something like, okay, let's play again. Namely, we'll run this piece of code again for the user. And we can, it's a print line, so it's going to drop, and then we can give it an empty space just for neatness and tidiness. The only tricky part about those escape characters is you've got to make sure that you include them right after the, at the end of whatever string you're wanting to print to the screen. And it needs to be the double quotations need to be after the escape sequence. Okay, let's play again. That should work out. And it, then we could give the user something to the effect that they know that the program is restarted. So serial print line and then just something simple enough like program restart so they know that it's all beginning again. And we would need to you know, we can flag it with some exclamation points if it's helpful to the user. And that should work. We may need to add some more spaces or, you know, it just depends. But we can copy this so that we don't have to enter too much typing, too much more. And reuse it under the serial print. And this is also a way to be consistent with those amount of spaces. So program end. And then try to just align them just for aesthetics or orientation. And so we don't want it to be, okay, let's play again. We want it to be something else like, you know, we can thank them for playing. So thanks for playing. And then maybe see ya. That should give us basically the overall functionality of an AND gate program. But we'll need some delays here. We still need another delay. It's like at this point, it's going to display the output of that AND gate, and then it's immediately going to ask them, do they want to play again? So we need a delay between that AND gate function call and it kicking out the AND gate output and the prompt to play again. So say two and a half seconds should be sufficient. Let's verify. We don't have any compiler errors. It, well, they would have immediately shown up to upload the code and see does our little AND gate program work. Welcome to the AND gate program. Select no line ending. There was a brief delay. Then it prompted me for the first truth value. So I can say enter a true. And a true should appear by input. And it does. Now enter the second one. Well, I'll enter another true. The input should be true and it is input 2 should and gate output is true now there's a delay do you want to play again y for yes and for no so let's say yes enter notice it shows that y at the end so I know that it's working okay let's play again program restart it's restarted again now it's entered for street value but notice that there's no space between here and that's kind of ugly so we'll need to add in a space after program restart then it says, well, it wants the next value. So I could enter a T, could enter a F, and then the AND gate output should be false. It is. Do you want to play again? Let's say no, just a test. Enter an N. 
enter no okay thanks for playing see you the program has ended or well the arduino is checking one of those if conditionals over and over at the top of void loop but as far as outward behavior goes it stopped what we really need to fix at this point is just we need a space add that in program restart simple enough to do we already have the print line drop in an escape new line character and then test this again and that should smooth out welcome to the end gate program no line ending is setting enter the first truth value enter t for true f for false so let's enter a t we get true enter another t we'll get true the output should be true it is the end gate outputs true there's a delay then do you want to play again say yes I want to play again I entered a T now enter button yes okay let's play again program restart notice we have a nice space here now and then enter first truth value everything started back over I can enter an F and this should be false and it is I can enter a true this should come out true it does verified the AND gate outputs false. Why? Well, because both of its inputs weren't true. Do you want to play again? Yes or no? Let's say yes. Enter. It displays that Y character I just entered. OK, let's play again. And now the program's restarted. It's entered some values again. So we can go F for false, F for false. The output should be false. It is. Do I want to play again? Say no, I don't. Just enter an N in the serial monitor and it displays that in and then thanks for playing I'll see you the programs ended At this point one has successfully created a piece of code in an Arduino that simulates the behavior in an gate and you can run this as many times as you want to and play with it as much as you want um, we could do some more commenting but at this point it would probably be a good time to save file save save what we've done and we haven't added in the function prototypes yet go back to the top of the program now we can clean it up and comment it out this is always a good last step is see exactly what's going on we got our global variables we got this variables controlling void loop those are collecting and storing our inputs no problem and we're using this one in multiple cases it's probably a good idea to flag this to the user. You do this not just for the for an external person reading your code, but also for yourself. So when you come back to this in two, three months, and you're like, whoa, okay, what are these things doing? Well, your comments will tell you. That'll take care of commenting the global variables. Now the function prototypes, those are going to just be the prototypes of the functions we created. So we had a get input function. We scroll down. And to get input to prototype it, all we need is that first line of it and then a semicolon after it. Character get input void. Character get input void. Clearly the compiler made sense of what we've done without these prototypes. So in a sense they're unnecessary and behind the scenes it's already assigned this stuff. It's taking care of it for us. But it's still nice. Sometimes it won't take care of it so having the prototypes is never a waste then we need our function prototype for our AND gate function so we can scroll down and all we need is that first line we can copy it edit copy so that we don't make any typos and we can go back up to function prototypes and then paste it and all we need at the end of it is a semicolon and that'll be a function prototype for the AND gate function. And we can close this down. Now we have our function prototypes taken care of. We can keep scrolling, void setup. The welcome message and special instructions for the user is underneath that. That comment will suffice. And then so we can tighten things up, make it a little more tidy. We can go to void loop and see do we need any more comments we can do that if it's helpful so we need to solicit the user for the first input that's what this line does then we need to instead of get input function we can say collect and store 
users first input. This is just going to give the user feedback. If they enter the T, it's going to throw true at the end of that. If they enter an F, it's going to throw false. We can update this comment to make it reflect what's actually happening. So, And so now we need to test those user inputs via the AND gate function, that special function. We call it. And given that the way these this input 1 and input 2 have been updated above this line on the global level this function will suck those global values in perform the AND gate test and then kick out whether the gate should return is returned to true or false then we have a delay then we're at this play again portion sometimes it's kind of helpful to stretch this out so that it's visually easier to identify then do you want to play again this is collecting and storing um, users choice so users play again choice user entry feedback and now we toggle that program stop variable based on whether the user entered a Y or they entered an N so this is just toggle program stop variable void loop repeating or not that should be explicit enough and we've reached the end of void loop at this point we can tighten this up and there's our special purpose functions hanging out in the bottom and it's like I mentioned, this function will work as it is. It would also work just as well if you commented out that, this, and this. It will still work, even if those lines are missing. But for, perfect, for being explicit, I leave those in. So this is basically saying the get input function, that while there's nothing in the Arduino serial receive buffer, do nothing. As soon as something enters the serial receive buffer, read it, read the character, assign it to this generic global character variable, break out of the while loop, and return that character outside of the get input function. And then we have those other global variables collecting and storing whatever was collected here. And then the AND gate, really, the, all the magic happens on that line, and that's pretty explicit. That's just going to be AND gates output. That's it. That's all there is to generate implementing what initially started out as our program design. If we go back to that design that we did in the previous tutorial, we've welcomed the user to the program. We've displayed the instructions that we collected their input times two, displayed feedback to the serial monitor. We've done that. We created an AND function to mirror that behavioral rule or to simulate it, so that's done. No problem. We've displayed the output to the user. We actually did step four inside of that AND gate function, so this is good. We could have done it differently, but either way, we accomplished it. And then we've prompted them to play again, and it does restart on command by the user. So we have implemented our design or our sketch. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful. The next few will just be looking at the core behavior associated with OR gates, NOR gates, etc., etc., and changing whatever needs to, whatever making whatever changes in this piece of software needs to happen to simulate the different sorts of behavior really all we'll do is we'll be changing from this AND gate function it'll be an OR gate function we'll change the welcome message a little bit and we'll have to change work inside the special purpose functions we'll create. We'll have to have different tests on this line. But beyond that, really, if you understood how this worked, you could in principle be creating programs for any logic gate that you want to 
just given this piece of code that we just worked through and talked through. Yeah. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, please click like and subscribe to my channel.